Well, this evening we're going to be in Revelation chapter 6. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 6. The title of my message tonight is No Place to Hide. No Place to Hide. I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks, taking down notes here and there, and decided to preach on it tonight. And, uh, it is our going through the No Names in the Bible series. But if you guys are there, we'll go ahead and read it. In verse number one, it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see, and I saw. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us! And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us here again uh, once more today into your house to hear your word and to uh, congregate together, uh, to be with each other, to edify one another, to uh, praise your holy name and to glorify you with singing and uh, with preaching uh, and with uh, being faithful as uh, good stewards uh, of your word, being here. Uh, please give us a blessing, Lord, to understand your word and to know it and to uh, let it sink into our minds and to our hearts and apply it to our lives and let us know what it's, uh, what it's teaching us here tonight. And I pray that you be with me and help me preach it. As you know, I always need your help. Uh, without you, I can do nothing. Uh, but with you, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So please be with me, Lord, because I desperately need it. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Alrighty, like I said earlier, we're going through the No Names in the Bible series. Uh, they're here in Revelation chapter 6. In the last few verses, these are the unsaved people at the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says that he's coming back with vengeance. You know, on that day he's coming, you know, the, the sun's going to be black and the moon's going to be like blood. Stars are going to fall from heaven. It's going to be earthquakes and famines. You know, 
we see all these seals that are opened and it's just death, hell, and destruction. You know, that's the day that, that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back with vengeance. And these are the people who are unsaved when he comes back. That's the no names in the Bible. And these people have no names in the Bible because their names don't matter. You know, it's a theme throughout the whole Bible. Their names don't matter. There's no sense in putting their names in there because they don't matter. Your name doesn't matter when God blots your name out of his book. It doesn't matter. You know, the Bible says that, you know, we're going to, he's going to make all things new. He's going to forget all the old things. The people that reject him, he will forget them. Some people believe in a God that they made up in their own image. You know, thinking God loves me no matter what. Because I'm me, I'm special. But that's not what our God, our Bible says. That's not what God says. And Hosea chapter 9 verse 15, it says, All their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of mine house. I will love them no more. All their princes are revolters. And Psalm chapter 5 verse 5, it says, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. In Psalm chapter 11 verse 5 it says, The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. You know, that describes, you know, that day of the Lord to a T. You know, because the stars are going to be falling down from heaven. There's going to be fire and brimstone. You know, it's going to be a horrible day if you're not saved. You know, that's what God thinks about, you know, the special people who don't think that they need to be saved. That's what he thinks about them. Those three verses there, he says, he will abhor them. He will love them no more. They're all revolters. He says he will destroy them. And rain snares, fire, and brimstone. That's what he thinks about the special who don't need to get saved. You know, well, I'm special. I don't need to get saved. Uh, you know, a lot of people do believe that. That's why they don't come to church. That's why they don't pray. They, they think that, you know, I'm really a good person overall. No, nobody's good. No, not one is what the Bible says. In Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 14, it says, Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven... And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. You know, God just wanted to blot their name out of heaven. You know, I'm just giving that in an example that God can blot your name out of heaven. He will just forget you. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 33, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Blot out of my book. You know, that's a terrible thing. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 20, it says, The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Completely forget about him. You know, when we're up in heaven rejoicing a thousand years from now, you know, the names of these people will never be mentioned. He will blot out their name from under heaven. You know, we are all written in the book of life when we are born. There's not one verse in the Bible that says, I will write you down in the book of life. But there's lots of verses that says, I will blot you out of, out of my book, out of your, uh, out of, blot your name out of under heaven. There's lots of verses. I didn't even write them all down here. Uh, you know, it's the unsaved that gets their name blotted out. The saved get their sins blotted out. You know, the unsaved people get their names blotted out, but the saved people get their sins blotted out. In uh, Psalm 51 verse 9 it says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. You know, amen, amen. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 17 it says, And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. You know, that's saved people. He's not going to remember any of our sins. But the unsaved, he's just not going to remember them at all. You know, praise God for that. In Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You know, amen. That's what it means to be saved. You know, all of our sins 
or put on Jesus. And he took our sins away, you know, when he, when he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. But the unsaved people who think they're so special that they don't need God, you know, he's just going to forget their names altogether. When we get saved, it's the opposite of taking out uh, our names out of the book of life. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 it says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Amen. It's the opposite. You know, when people are unsaved and they refuse to get saved, God blots out their name out of his book of life. But when we get saved, not only are we still in the book of life, but he confesses our name before his Father and before the holy angels. It says, he that overcometh. You know, it's simple. How do you overcometh? The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. That's how we overcome. It says, him that overcometh, he will confess our names to the Father and to the angels in heaven. How do we do that? Believe in Jesus. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, goodbye, Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't believe that. Goodbye, you know, the Mormons and the Muslims and the Buddhists and every other false religion that don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Their names will be blotted out of his book. Their names won't matter. And there's no place to hide. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. That's their name written in the book of life that's been blotted out. We was all in there in the beginning. We were all made in the image of God, every single one of us. Our name was in the book of life when we were born. But at some point along the way, our names got blotted out. And then when we get born again, you know, that name is still there. God knows who's going to get born again. Our names have never been blotted out. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, that means anybody. Anybody. Whosoever means anybody. And that goes for the unsaved also, like it says right here in Revelation 20, 15. And whosoever was not found, written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. That's scary. You know, that's why their names doesn't matter, because they're not in the book of life. They're going to be forgotten forever. And it doesn't matter who you are. If you would, look down at Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. It doesn't matter who you are. It says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? It says that they hid themselves. Is there any place to hide from God? How can we hide from God? If we went down to the center of the earth, we still wouldn't be hidden from God. If we went a billion light years into space, we still wouldn't be hidden from God. There's no place to run. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, it says... But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have thou respect unto thy prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place which thou hast said, My name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto thy prayer, which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou unto the supplication of thy servant, and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. That's how big our God is. Where could anybody hide? Nowhere. You know, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Where can we hide? He's everywhere. In Psalm chapter 94, verse 7, it says, Yet they say the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? 
He that chasteneth the heathen, shall he not correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. You know, God sees all, hears all, and knows all. That's how big our God is. We can't hide anything from him. Nothing, not even our thoughts. You know, if we was to hide in some cave somewhere, and God couldn't see us by chance, he would still know our thoughts. That's what it says right there, that he knows all of our thoughts. In Numbers chapter 32, verse 23, it says, But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sins, your sin will find you out. There's no sin that we can hide from God. We can't hide from God, and we can't hide any sins from God. He knows our thoughts. Our sins will find us out. There's no place to hide. And there's nothing that we can hide from God. You know, some people say, well, I don't sin. I've heard that out so winning. They actually say that I don't sin. Really? Have you confirmed that with God? Because that's not what the Bible says. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says in Romans 3.23. Well, then they say, well, I don't make, you know, big sins, the big sin, the, the sins that matter. Really? Have you ever told a lie? You know, a lie uh, will send you to hell just as fast as anything else. In Revelation chapter 21, 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. Those are some pretty outrageous sins. But look what he adds to that same list. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All liars. Revelation 22, 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. It doesn't say lies, it just says maketh a lie. One lie. How many people do you have to kill to be a murderer? Just one. How many lies do you have to tell to be a liar? Just one. You know, one lie will send you to hell just as fast uh, as a murder, uh, according to the Bible. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, the analogy I like to use, especially when I'm out soul winning, if you were stand, uh, hanging over a cliff, falling, getting ready to fall to your death, holding on to a chain with ten links, how many links have to break before you fall to your death? Just one. Only one link has to break. They all don't have to break. You don't have to break every link to fall. You just have to break one. If you would go to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Like I was saying earlier in, in James chapter 2 verse 10 it says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. One white lie will send you to hell just as fast as a murder. Because you're guilty of all. If you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. You know, different sins have different punishments, but all sins will send you to the lake of fire. There is no place to hide at the day of the Lord, and there won't be anything to say, nothing to say in front of a holy God. If you're there in Amos chapter 5, in verse 13 it says, Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas! And they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it? Nobody can hide from the Lord. It doesn't matter where you go. You know, if you put your hand on the wall 
the serpent will bite you. It doesn't matter where you go. Nobody can hide from God. If you would flip over just a couple pages to chapter 9 of Amos. Or just one page. Amos chapter 9. In verse number 1 it says, I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. And he said, smite the lintel of the door. That the post may shake. And cut them in the head. All of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land. And it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn. And it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. You know, there's no place to hide. Where are they going to hide? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Where could anybody hide, even if the mountains covered them up? It still isn't going to do them any good because the whole earth is going to melt. There's no place to hide from God. If you would go to Revelation chapter 20. No place to hide from God. In Psalm chapter 139, it says, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Written in thy book. You know, he knows all of our ways. We, there's no place to hide from him. If we make our, our way into heaven, he's there. If we make our way into hell, you know, he's there. Uh, and we're written in his book. You know, amen to that. If you're there in Revelation chapter 20, in verse number 11, it says, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. There's no place to run and no place to hide. It says that there was no place for them. You know, is your name going to be in the book of life when Jesus comes? You know, that's the best question anybody could ever ask. You know, if you was to die today, are you sure that you're going to be in heaven? You know, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. You know, the main goal in life is to have your book written 
I'm sorry, the main goal in life is to have your name written in the book of life. That's the only people who are going to be remembered. Bear with me here. In Luke chapter 10 verse 20 it says, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If your name is not in written in heaven, there's only one other place, and that's the lake of fire. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Calent, Calent, Calent also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are written in the book of life. In the book of life. You know, that's the main goal. If your name's not written in the book of life, your name doesn't matter. Your name will be cast out of heaven. There will be no one to remember you forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 17, the last verse of our text tonight, it says, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Who? Those whose names are written in the book of life. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Because if they're not, you're going to spend eternity in a lake of fire. That's who's able going to be able to stand uh, when the great day of his wrath has come. Those who are written in the book of life. You know, make sure that you're written in the book of life. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for... Uh, being with us tonight and bringing us all here to your house. Thank you for your word.